And now, it's time for our special guest, our DCTF Small College Insider. Mr. Corey Hogue is here to join us to talk about some small colleges across the state of Texas. How you doing, Corey? I'm good. You know, I was thinking... People are going to think I wear the same clothes every day. <laughs> That's exactly hey, what's hey, going to happen. Luckily, you just recorded a podcast with no video, so it, it won't matter there. We can just say yeah, that happened a couple days ago. Texas football today, I recorded it's going to be played tomorrow. So people are going to go, he didn't even wear a new shirt. <laughs> I know, oh, exactly. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love it. I love it. For those that don't know, there are 47 programs in the state of Texas that play college football. It's going to be 48 soon with UTRGV yeah. coming up. So. That's a lot. I think it's hard to <laughs> keep track of 12 teams. You, sir, have to keep track of 35. So I, I don't know how you do it. I, I, I don't spend know a few hours it. every day scanning through, through things. And I'll, while uh, in between the podcast recording and coming here, I was uh, looking at my Twitter and I see, it looks like, I don't know if they're listening to us, but I think they are. Because we've talked <laughs> about Sam Houston, I don't know how many times. But I get this thing from Sam Houston football post coach Keeler saying the standard is the standard. No matter how much you think this year is going to be, what the AD says about looking forward to next year, the standard is the standard, and I promise you he is not going in there with a losing mentality this year. Yeah, let's start with Sam Houston, right? They're, they're making that transition up uh, to FBS football, so they're not eligible to play in the playoffs. They're not eligible to win a conference championship. They only played nine games this year. They start at A&M. What does Coach Keeler focus on this year? Is it 2023? Because it feels like that's a way to maybe lose a locker room at least for a year, right? you got to figure out some stuff for this year. Is it that A&M game? Is it SFA? Kind of like what are the carrots for this, for this program in 2022? Well, those games are definitely a couple. The other thing, Coach Keeler is excellent about understanding his players. He's got a great feel for his players. He knew at halftime of that game against Montana State that they were done. He knew they had reached the end of what they could do as a team, and it's incredible it took 23 games to get there. But he's that in tune with his guys. He gave them he's, – he's always been – throughout this COVID situation, I think he may have – he's one of the best at handling it. And how even after last year, they didn't do a lot of off-season stuff. So he's really, he's really in tune with his guys, and I think that's going to help a lot of it. He's still going to want them to compete. His message isn't going to be 2023. Now, as far as personnel-wise, there may be a few more red shirts and maybe a few surprise red shirts that are looking 2023. But on the field, in practice, Coach Keeler's not looking 2023. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, they went 22-1 22 and one in the, the calendar year of 2021. I mean, maybe the best college football year, calendar year of all time. You know, only five programs with more wins than Sam Houston over the last 11 years, and that's Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and South Dakota State. How quickly do you think this program adjusts to FBS and competes in the Conference USA for a bowl game and for a conference title? A lot of it's going to come down to depth. And again, we've talked, you know, you know, everybody talks about that step from D2 up to FCS from 36 to 63, but now you go 63 to 85, uh, and that's a lot. And so it, it depends on how quickly they can fund all those 85 scholarships. As far as recruiting goes, that's not a worry. Already crushing it. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. They are out there competing with the top in, in throughout the country right now. They are competing. And, and so I, I think sooner rather than later, I'm going to say probably 2024, 2025 area. It, maybe a little too optimistic for 24. But I think at 25, it's realistic to think they can pick off six games. <laughs> I'm, like, randomly excited for that first uh, Sam Houston UTEP game. You know, like, East Texas, West Texas. Oh, like, it's going to so be so interesting. This is going to be so, so different. You know, a lot. And randomly, a decent amount of UTEP's players are East Texas kids. Mm -hmm. So there was UTEP SFA a couple of years ago. Right. Yep. That was a that was Worlds colliding. Battle, but Worlds <laughs> colliding. Yeah. Uh, speaking of SFA, I think we both agree. Best FCS school in the in the state. Oh, yeah. The favorite favorite to win the WAC uh, above Sam Houston, even if Sam Houston was in a normal year. Colby Carthel in his fourth seasons just done an excellent job. What are your expectations of the Jacks entering this season? Oh, if if everything goes well, if they can stay healthy, and and their depth holds through for them, and they get some breaks because in the playoffs you need breaks. They didn't get them last year against UIW. UIW got that in that one game. That was the whole difference. And that's another team that's right there with SFA this year. But I think they're the class because of what they return. If they remain healthy, 
and just get those breaks. They're a national contender. And, and I I think they've got some motivation. I think you're right about that. they got a lot of motivation here because here's another top 25 put out by my friend Emery Hunt at CBS Sports. Oh, man. Shout out to Emery Hunt. That dude Shout watches Hunt, so man. much football. He, like, I don't know how he does he's it. He's like, oh, here's a German league clip. Or something. <laughs> yes. You're like, what are you yes. doing? <laughs> yes. I don't know how he does that. He is so good with this. He has them at ninth. He has SFA at ninth, which is the highest ranking I've seen in a preseason. But I, I put – Top five, I would be more like five or six, possibly. Like they, they're that good. Yeah, quarterback Trey Self is back. Wide receiver Xavier Gibson is a unicorn. He had a thousand more receiving yards than anybody else on that roster last and year. He like, was triple covered against right. you. I don't right, right, right. right. He, like, he, that's he, wild. He's absolutely incredible. He was seventh in the Walter Payton Award voting last mm-hmm. year. I think he's the top returning vote getter for that award. You know, and that yes. for the people that don't know, that's the Heisman Trophy. For FCS, and so one of the one of the best players on there. He's the only FCS player that made our All Texas Summer Edition uh, mm-hmm. team. Uh, really good. I, I'm excited to see uh, what SFA does this year. Incarnate Word, another team that made a pretty decent FCS run last year. Like we, they beat over they beat SFA in overtime in the first round of the FCS playoffs. Some new faces: Eric Morris, the head coach; Cam Ward, quarterback, now at Washington State. G.J. Kinney, we were talking about this on the podcast. I, it always confuses me that the G is in front of the J on the initials thing. It always gets me. Uh, he's he's in town. He's a quarterback. I'd imagine the offense stays the same. We talked about a little bit on the, the small college preview podcast that we just did. Can that defense catch up to what we know the Cardinals offense can do? That defense is pretty good. And that team is pretty good. And they're very talented. And, and there's a lot of changeover, and I think that's a lot of the reason why – they're ranked 11th by Emory Hunt here in this one that I'm looking at. And, and they've been right around that 11, 12, 13 range. There are some questions, but that's a talented roster. They were within one yard of beating Sam Houston and ending that streak one week early. They were that close to beating them there. I, I told you earlier, Sam Houston, had and they couldn't just kneel down. They had to do a quarterback sneak to get the ball out of the end zone there <laughs> at the end of the game. It was that close with him. So the talent is there. Uh, you mentioned Xavier Gibson and the, the Walter Payton Award, but the defensive award, they, I mean, Kelechi, I always forget. <laughs> I'm going to mess up his last name, so I'm not going to say it now, but he's the linebacker there at UIW. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he – he is uh, he is tremendous, and he's one of the favorites to win the Best Defensive Player Award in FCS this year. So that they have the talent. They have Taylor Grimes. He is the right behind Xavier Gibson in all of the All American lists. And um, just a quick tease: I have it. We got the DCTF All Small College team coming out next week. So next Wednesday on the Blitz, we'll have that that team will be out there, and so you could probably expect those to be two of the receivers. Yeah, he, he's incredible as well. 87 catches last year. I was at that Incarnate Word Texas State game randomly because I thought I was going to ride a Texas State improving kind of game because they had started 1-0. I was like, Texas State's going to be 2-0. I'll go to the Texas State game, get this article out of the way before it's ruined, right, before I can't write it. Incarnate Word is the reason that I couldn't write it, right, because they won. What, what stood out to me, though, is before the game, I remember sitting there in the press box and going, wow, Incarnate Word's not smaller than – Texas State like they're they have a big offensive mm-hmm. line and that's going to help a lot with this adjustment with Lindsey Scott quarterback coming in you ought to seen the clash between them and SFA you talk about big dudes and that and, and Sam Houston I, I mean those guys are massive down there in the trenches at those schools it, that's why they're so successful that's why they're able to put up the points and and stop teams is because they they just are so big so let me give you a hypothetical SFA and Incarnate Word are playing week one Right? Where do you where do you Ooh. think that line would be? Like, let's say it's a neutral field, you know, in Austin or whatever. SFA by three? Is it a wider gap than that? Like, how close are these two teams together? Do you think? On a neutral field, because that takes out that home field yeah. advantage. Yeah. Right around three or four. Yeah. Because I think with home field, if it was at SFA, you'd probably say a touchdown. Yeah. If it was uh, back in San Antonio. You would put it right about a point, <laughs> you know. So I think I think three or four is right about right about right. It, they're really close, and so are all the other teams in FCS because they were so close to Sam last year. Yeah, 
SFA and UIW almost beat Sam Houston last year, both of them. So, And Sam Houston was the reigning national champion. So that just tells us how close the top of FCS is. Both of those teams are national title contenders. Moving to the SWAC, you know, on the west side, Prairie View A&M and Texas Southern are in there. Uh, you know, Prairie View A&M loses their coach, loses a quarterback, loses a couple star defenders to the transfer portal kind of late after spring for, for first-year head coach Bubba McDowell. Do you still consider them the favorite in a, in a pretty weak West division? I think so. I think they're right there. Probably it's most likely going to come down to them or Alcorn. Yeah. That, that's probably where it'll come down to. And I just think PVA, you know, has got they've got better talent. I mean, Prairie View is, is really solid. They've got a front seven that is going to put pressure on everyone – and, and I know I cut some videos last year and put them on the, the college Twitter account of, of them just running down running backs and quarterbacks in the backfield, and I look forward to doing that again this year. They're fun to watch. They dominate that front seven. So the question becomes Trazon, Trazon Conley, quarterback, you know, can he be accurate enough and, and they give him enough time on the offensive line to find that open receiver. He does have – he has good speed, but they want to also be able to throw the ball some. So yeah. that's going to be the question. And then the other team in that division, Texas Southern, kind of it's kind of flipped, right? They got quarterback figured out. They're going to score points. How far away is that defense from being a, a division contending team? That's hard to say because every year this team has taken another big step forward under Clarence McKinney. So a big step forward for the defense this year would help. Look, if they even get down to maybe an at, from – we were going over the defensive numbers. On third downs, they allowed 41% conversion. On fourth down, they allowed 71% conversion rate. You don't win a lot of games if you don't get off the field on third and fourth down. So, And that's not even like average. Like average is what, about 35 36% yeah. for that? And then for – so they're well below average. So if they just come up close to average, kind of like what I said about the Dallas Cowboys last year, if that defense comes up close to average, they're a threat. Mm -hmm. The Lone Star Conference is insanity, oh, right? Day. They got teams from Texas, teams from Oregon, teams from New Mexico. They got a team from Canada. There's a team in Washington. Uh, you put it in our in the preview from Texas A&M Kingsville to Simon Fraser, which is the Canadian school, as 2,424 24 miles. For reference, for USC a conference game. That's yeah, insane. For reference, USC to Rutgers is only 300 miles more than that. 2,754 yards. So that's wow. basically a cross country trip. You're just going from south to north. Are you trying to take my wife away from me? <laughs> <laughs> is that your plan today, sir? Have, did you taste all the goods, the, the goodies that she brought in? <laughs> the cookies, the cookies were good. <laughs> and now you're trying to take her gotten, from me? I haven't gotten to the cake yet. The cookies are good. <laughs> Let me tell you, they moved me. They moved me up to Dallas, and I haven't had a home cooked meal in a while. So uh, anything baked is a, is gonna win. Me me over you, you uh what you mentioned Rutgers twice though i, I mean same goodness. stat, it's same stat. Uh, you're just man the, i'm gonna walk home <laughs> I'll, I'll drive you back in, in the magazine you have angelo state predicted to win the lone star conference but since then midwestern state's gotten their quarterback dylan sterling cole another year would you flip that would you have midwestern state the defending champion picked first knowing that their quarterback's now back yes that was their question they have got the other question they have is a running back but that can be helped with a good offensive line, which they have that. They have an amazing defense coming back. Malik Owens is returning. He, he is a terror, has been for four or five years now in the Lone Star Conference. The COVID year always throws me off with how many they actually play now. <laughs> and then, so it's, it, they have the defense. They have the pieces. The question was quarterback. Did they have someone who could be accurate enough to get it to their guys uh, consistently enough and – Dylan Sterling Cole did, did a really good job. They won the conference last year. Uh, he can come back. He's got that year of experience in the offense. They've got uh, Skylar Morningweg as their offensive coordinator, who Marty Morningweg's son. So he's been there for a few years. That Coach Maskell, Coach Bill Maskell, does a great job with mm -hmm. staff continuity. Yeah. He is so good with that. He's kept he's kept Skylar there. He's got um, the defensive coordinator Rick Renner has been there for Rich been there forever, man. So he he knows how to keep the 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 people together, and that that's one of his big things. So yes, I think so. And I would have picked Angelo State if they hadn't lost so much. Yeah, they lost an offensive lineman, uh, Patrick Willis, in the transfer portal went to Jackson State. Uh, that hurts. And, and when you lose on the offensive line, that's where games are decided. And so that that would be the big reason why, because they've got a running back. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> Angelo State's got the preseason conference player of the year for a reason. 
but he's got to have a hole. Yeah. And so that's kind of where I, where I put MSU right now, maybe a slight favorite over Angelo. And then lastly, before we get out of here, we got to get down to the ASC level, Division Three. Mm-hmm. You, sir, <laughs> went on a limb and picked Harden-Simmons uh, to finish first in that conference above Mary Harden-Baylor, of course, the defending uh, national champion who's on a 20-game winning streak longest in the nation. The floor is yours. Why? If I could tell you how many people questioned my intelligence, and rightfully so, after this, it, it would probably it would probably amaze you. Yes, I, I raise a little bit of a stir, um, especially considering that everybody else comes out and puts Bernard Baylor at number one in the national poll. So it's like, what? Thanks, guys, and they put Hart <laughs> Simmons like seventh, you know. But if if there's a year, it's now. Yeah. You know, they've got too many changes. They they head coach. Coach Harmon is in. Coach Fredenberg is gone. That's still an adjustment. That's still a new defensive coordinator. They lost their offensive coordinator. I think that matters probably of all the the moving pieces. That may be the biggest one because Stephen Lee was incredible. He went to Abilene Christian where I'm sure he's going to do a good job. That's a team to watch out for. But when you you look at it, Harden-Simmons was within six points of them last year. Had them down, had the game at the half – all they had to do was finish. They're only six points from the national champion who was not played any closer than that. So they have roughly 10 starters back on both sides of the ball. That, that's kind of what they could at least. That kind of continuity, their only question really becomes quarterback. They don't need someone to be all-state, all, all-American. They need someone to get the ball to their playmakers. They can do that. They've got that on the roster. I think – I think if there's a year, it's this one. So I went out on that limb, and I put uh, Harden Simmons to do it. And I'll tell you, I will. I will be at that game. On uh, it's, I think it's late September. I will be at that game. It's at Harden Simmons this year, mm-hmm. and so feel free to come by and let me know that I was wrong or I was right. <laughs> Give me more of your opinions at that time. I, I like it. I really do because I, the interaction is what we're here for. That's why we do this job. We love interacting, talking football. I'd be there too, but it's the SMU TCU week, uh, and yeah. there's there's Sorry. a little bit of heated rivalry going on between no Sunny Dice and right? <laughs> Right. Not so, at all. So I'm kind of taking that one uh, on that one. Are you more excited for Harden Simmons, Mary Harden Baylor, or the final SFA Sam Houston game? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. Excitement. Because they're like back to back. Yes. Like one's September 24th, one's October 1, if I remember correctly. Right around there. Yeah. I'm really excited about Mary Harden Baylor, Harden Simmons. I'm also kind of dreading that because people could be mean. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I'm excited yeah. about that. Right. But the Battle of the Piney Woods, that's bittersweet. Yeah. I don't, I'm not in the, the excited. I, it's bittersweet, and I've got to get there for it uh, because I know the AD Bobby Williams was on a podcast yesterday with uh, Sam Houston's Bearcat Sports Network, and he said that there's going to be a pause and that him and Ryan Ivey are talking about redoing it. Well, that gives me a little more hope than the Texas and Texas A&M one, but we're talking FBS versus FCS. Yeah. You're you're yes. expecting SFA to go play a r- bitter rival with twenty more scholarships than you. So that there's a lot of things to that. Um, well, I, I feel like it, it could go both ways too. If if Sam Houston State were to win that game, SFA is kind of knocked down a bit. But if SFA were to beat uh, Sam Houston State, an yeah. FBS team, where does that put Sam Houston State? Yeah, you know? I don't know if Sam Houston can risk losing that game early on in the trans transition. Right. right, they're yeah. gonna have to wait five or ten years before this thing kicks back. Well, up. Uh, look, this was it. Uh, I think it was South Carolina, <laughs> North Dakota State yep. contacted South Carolina. I saw this right. yesterday. <laughs> South Carolina went no. Yeah, well, they, probably, <laughs> they probably didn't even <laughs> give it no. They're probably like ah, wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not playing them. Yeah. I have one more question for you. Okay. Since you two recorded an FCS podcast, does that mean me and Alicia can record a Big Ten preview? The mics are right here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why not. For y'all yeah. that don't I, know, Alicia, Corey's wife, is a big Rutgers fan. And, of course, I'm a big Michigan State fan. So we, we love Big Ten football over here. We're, we're adding as many podcasts as possible. <laughs> but <laughs> let, me, let me warn you. She, you get her talking Big Ten football. She'll talk good about Rutgers. <laughs> She'll talk good about Michigan State because she likes you. I, of course. That's the only reason. Any other team 
she will not have good things to say. That's so fine. You're, I'm the you're same way. You're taking that. Uh, you're taking a risk. <laughs> That's fine. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. <laughs> we'll before, do it. Before I let you get out of here, can Trinity compete with Harden Simmons, Mary Harden Baylor in that Division three level once they if they make the playoffs again? They were one play away from beating Mary Harden Baylor in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. So those three teams are about as close as it gets. They they got to be three of the top five in the country, in my opinion, to start this year. And, and Trinity comes back with Tucker Horn at quarterback. The the defense is back. They they allowed eight point one points, which I know is tough to believe, but they allowed eight point one points per game last year. That defense is real. They held Mary Harden Baylor to thirteen. 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 And that was a hard-earned 13. So whoever comes out of those three, mm-hmm. that's that's my national contender right there, my, my favorite for the national champion. I yep. uh, appreciate it, sir. Uh, for those listening who like it, you know, I think we're going to do this on a weekly basis. I think we're going to start kind of a small college podcast. It won't be an hour and a half every single time no. like the one we just did earlier. That will be out pretty soon. But you know, 30, 45, an hour on, on what happened across the state. Uh, again, we, we cover 47 schools, Yes, you know, yeah. no one, no one else does that. And it's fun. It's a lot of it's fun. It's a lot. It is it's so much fun. fun. What, what's your, uh, so what do you feel like in early August? Is it, is it like the day before Christmas? Is there a little bit of dread? Like what is the feeling before football season for you? Because for me, it's a mixture. It's not just all excitement. There is yeah. also a little bit of like, oh no. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that really, it seems to grow a little, the oh no seems to grow a little more every year. Like, I got my magazine this year, and I went, yeah, okay, I'll put you over here. Yeah. Not, I'm not, not going to look at you later. Yet. <laughs> no. It's June. I, I yeah. still give away from me. Yeah. I still have to celebrate America yeah. first, you know? <laughs> so give me some time. No, but, but it's – um. It's a year-round thing now. Yeah, it is. That's the thing that has changed in just the five years that I've been doing this. It's year-round. It, with that portal this year, every mm-hmm. coach I talk to is still looking for offensive linemen. They still are now. They're, you've got transfers. <laughs> JUCOs are still building their roster yeah. now. It's crazy what's happening there. So, yeah, it, it's it's a year-round thing. So when the season comes and you know that it's, it's going to pick up even more and you get football brain – and you just go for seven days straight on football for five months. The the thought of that becomes a little daunting. Yeah. But then when you remember that you're traveling, you're going to all these great small towns, you're going to all these great colleges, and uh, you call that a job <laughs> that you're watching a game that you love, and then you write about it. Yeah. Oh. That's not really a job. So I, you don't complain about that. I, I do want to say, I think you guys need to do a top of each city of the uh, FBS schools. Who, best barbecue city. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. That'll I, get some talk. I ran that into will. a cholesterol problem a few years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, don't, I don't eat a lot Doesn't of Doesn't everybody. I've become the guy I used to make fun of at barbecue places that orders like turkey. You know, that I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this brisket. <laughs> I right ran there into a cholesterol problem probably before I met my <laughs> wife, but definitely with her ability to cook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I run into a cholesterol problem. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, w- last year I got hired in September, yeah. like the first oh, week yeah. of September. And so it was hard to just get in here and just cover the 12 FBS schools. I don't think we did a good enough job on my level covering all 47. I think this year we're going to do a better job of that. We're going to do a a Texas 47 where we kind of rank all 47 teams within tiers. We're going to do a a weekly podcast. Of course, you have the Blitz coming out every single Wednesday. So uh, I don't know if anybody else will cover those other 35 teams as well as we do, and that's the goal for this year. So appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Gone are the power poles, and I'm really happy about that. Because that is never fun. But I, <laughs> this new one we got is going to create some some kind of how we're going to it. It's going to create some talk as well. Yeah. So it, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, nice to have your your kind of grounded last year. You were just flying when you got here. It you was got still, I, was, I still had soccer brain on. Like I, I, <laughs> you did. I, was, I was like I like I was in Vancouver. For my last yes. like thing, and then like came straight for week two. You know, like it was insane. So I, I remember your your timeline. You were like Austin, Austin, Austin. D- Dave Campbell's. Yeah. I went, whoa, right, okay. I was in a season last year. I felt like Sam Houston. I was in a season last year from February through January. You know, like well, there was because the soccer ran right into to yeah. football. So no, I, I get it because I, we had the, the fall season, right? The COVID spring. 
Right. So we had teams playing of the 35 all fall, then the spring, and then you had a little bit of a summer, and then you went right back to the fall again to January. So, yeah, it was something. Yeah. 